Okay. Now, tell me, have you guys got your textbooks here, a pencil and a ruler? What textbooks, sir? The um, main textbook, Study and Master. Have you got it here at all? I just want to see if you've got it here. Just won't you put a hand up so I can see how many people have got it? One, two, three, four. And three haven't got it. Five have got it. Six. Uh, hang on. So it looks like five have got it. Two of you haven't got the textbook here, if, I'm, if I see correctly. Because what I thought we could do was go through the pages and you need a pencil and a ruler and we draw a line down the side of the page for what's important. Is that okay? You all good with that? Okay, let me, let's try that. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm good, sir. Um, what do you see on the screen there? Can you see a view of, of my, from my room? Do you see this thing here? Do you know what that is? Okay, well, we've got, we're, anyway, we're on the right um, page then. This, this was, I put up a bird feeder. Here you'll see a nachi and there's a baboon sitting on my balcony. And there's the hills and all that behind. Okay, let's get rid of that. Whoops. Um, okay, let's try that again. Share. Sorry, this is going to take a little bit of um, just getting used to because that screen that has got the grade 12 work on it. Um, let's just see if I can see if I can get it back because Okay, Dirk, there's a list of common ions. Okay, I think I hope that you can see electrochemical reactions. And we're looking at page uh, 323. Can you see that? Okay. Electric. Now, what you need to do is put a line down the, the side in pencil preferably with a ruler of the first three lines. That's important. Page three, two, three of your textbook. Those first three lines, then galvanic cells, three lines, and electrolytic cells, three lines. Does that make sense? Is that okay with everyone? So we're going to mark up the textbook. This is like the same as giving you notes, the quick and dirty method of giving notes. Okay. Have you guys got that? Three lines there, three lines there, three lines there. Why don't, why don't you just put a thumbs up if you've got it, just so I can kind of see if, if it's working okay. Okay, I see a few thumbs up. And if you haven't got a textbook here, I will put it online and then you'll be able to mark it up. Now, the first thing that you really need to know is that a hang of a lot of your textbook, you don't need to know. So I actually um, 
protect you from giving too many notes because if people give too many notes, then people think that physics is hard. So the moment I look at a textbook, I, I can tell you that about more than 80% of it, you, you can happily ignore and get still get 100%. So just make a note of that, those there. Okay, let's go to the next page. Um, this would be page three to four. Just that little table on the top there. Those few lines at the end of the second paragraph on oxidation reduction there. Oxidizing agent, the whole bottom part, oxidizing agent, reducing agent, anode and cathode, all of that, you need to put a line down the page. Again, you see there's a lot that we can leave out. Now, obviously for enrichment, so it's that, that, and that. Obviously for enrichment, I will always encourage you to read your textbook, but this is more or less just the summary of what's important. So that's page three, two, four. Top paragraph, last bit of second paragraph, and the last two paragraphs. So can I go on? Thumbs up if I can go on. Anyone thumbs down, don't go on. Okay, thanks a million. Anybody waiting for still busy? Okay, let's go on to the next page then. So three, two, five. Um, the first two lines of page 325 and nothing else. So just the first two lines of 325. Right, page 326. Nothing. Not this activity, nothing on 326. Three to seven, nothing there either. Three to eight, the cell potential here. Three to eight, the cell potential. So that is just the third last paragraph of page three to eight. Um, you may want to make a little note of this block here, which says that uh, E cell is also sometimes um, known as V. Let me just get my glasses. As V cell. Okay, so that's all cell potential there. I'm going to move on. Page three to nine, nothing. Um, okay, page 330. Here, do you guys recognize that? Right, so just put a line down the side of that drawing. Page three to nine, that last drawing. You see, you've seen that before, we've done that, and that is, that is important on page 330. But that's about all. Everyone with it? Cool. I can move on. Okay, 331. Do you know I haven't um, drawn a line anywhere, but I'm just looking at this 
second last drawing here, which has got the way that they represent a cell, you may as well just put a line down to the left of my finger there. Just that little representation, zinc goes to form zinc two plus, two lines, copper two plus, line, copper solid. I, would, I think I should have possibly put a line there on page 331, just a little line there because that's how they represent the full cell. But I'm sure we'll come across that again. And you guys know that anyway. Moving on. 332, just the standard hydrogen electrode. And they just put a little line there and a line next to that diagram. At the bottom left, there's a line there. Can we just have a look at this diagram? I haven't shown you. This is something new. Um, now, you've got that table of standard redox things. And you, you will notice on that table that even the gases have, can produce an electric current or a half reaction. And you may wonder, okay, if you've got a beaker, you stick a wire in, then you can easily get a current. But how do you do it with a gas? So here's how you do it with a gas. You get it like a test tube with a hole in it. So this is an upside down test tube. You put one mole, always the solution is one mole per decimeter cubed and H plus. That means you put an acid in here. Then you put a, normally a platinum electrode Here's a platinum wire and a platinum electrode. And here you bubble hydrogen gas in at one atmosphere. So now you've got a half reaction of hydrogen gas and bubbles of, so you've got hydrogen gas bubbling there and you've got H plus. So here's, you've got a, you've got a half reaction, which is hydrogen goes to form H plus or H plus goes to form hydrogen. And then the voltage gets picked up on the platinum wire. And this platinum wire acts like your normal anode or cathode. How does that sound to you? Does it make any sense? Is that all right? Thumbs up. Does that make sense at all? Anyone like me to repeat that? No? Okay. So, so if you ever see that, that is how they find the, the potential. They measure the voltage of a gas. How would you normally measure the voltage of a gas? Because a gas, you know, you need an anode or a cathode. So they use a platinum wire and then the gas in, in um, equilibrium with its ions. Okay, can I go on to the next page? Everyone happy? Page 333. That top table in whatever color that is, orange, green, whatever it is, just that. That's a summary. And then the last line above this diagram gives you the cell notation. That's how we represent the whole, this particular cell. So just underline that. Now, do you guys recognize what this is? We did it just a few seconds ago. You will recognize there's your salt bridge. There's your normal copper electrode with a copper sulfate. You can see it's blue. There's your voltmeter. But look at this. Here is that half cell where they're taking hydrogen, they're bubbling it in, and here's an acid, here's the cotton wool of your salt bridge, and then they're measuring the voltage between the platinum electrode and the copper electrode, and then they're getting, then they're representing the cell as like this. So just have a look what's strange about this cell notation. It says platinum solid. 
that means the platinum electrode slash. Now, so the platinum is on the left, so it's written platinum on the left solid. Slash H2, okay, there's your hydrogen. Slash goes to form H plus. So that's your normal oxidation. Salt bridge. Now here's your reduction half reaction. Copper two plus at one mole per decimeter cube goes to form. That line means change of phase to copper solid. So you have seen, this is like how you would represent the, heart, the cell notation for a gas with a platinum electrode. Any questions? This is kind of new work, slightly new work for you. So, so please ask a question, shout out and, or come walk to the front if I can't hear you, but, but just, does this kind of make sense? Anyone want me to go over it again? No. No. Okay. No. Then I'll go on to the next page. Okay, page 334. There's the cell notation. Just put a little line there. Put a line next to that summary, the standard electrode potential. So that's on page 334, just the cell notation for this particular cell and the standard electrode potential. Page 334. Okay, page 335, there's nothing. 336, calculating the uh, E theta of the cell. Just that, the, the, I would guess you would call that the third paragraph and then the highlighted part. Just that. Page, that's on page 336, just there. Three, three, seven. Okay, has this one got fluorine on top? Yeah, it's got fluorine on top. So we ignore this standard reduction table, or a half reaction table. So there's nothing on page 337. Okay, 338 is the one we use. So you can put a line down the page for this one. For page 338. Um, this is the one with lithium on top, yeah. I don't know why I can't see a line. Maybe I didn't photograph it, but there should be a line down this page. Uh, so that's page 338. Now, just bear with me while I try and find page 339. Um, nope. Okay. Let's, I think, I think that's enough of that. Let's, let's just stop there for now. And I think we're going to go over this booklet page. Um, we're going to go over your booklets of paper to chemistry. So let's get out that booklet. I'm going to, I'm going to just do this.
Um, now, I'm just trying to get back to Zoom so that I can share this with you. Um, where is the Zoom? Do you just see me on the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, you just see me. So let's just try sharing the screen again. Share screen. Okay, where is the booklet? Um, <laughs> um, oh, I think it's this, yeah. Okay, I think they, there's the booklet. Now, now, listen to me, guys. We're in the start of July, which is the second half of your year. You guys are really good. But do you realize you're going to become fantastic when you've gone through this booklet? You are going to become really great. I look at you as you are little birds. You've just got your feathers. You're ready to fly. And now, now you're about to actually fly. And when you've gone through these booklet questions, you're going to find that you, you're going to be brilliant. You're going to, you, or you'll see these exact same questions again in the December paper. So bear this in mind. You'll never be as bad as you are now. That sounds terrible to say. You're only going to get better. And I can guarantee you by the time we work through this book, you're going to be not only a little bit better in an hour or two time, you're going to be fantastically better. So see if I'm wrong or not, but I'm, I was wrong once back in about 1950, but since then I'm mostly right. So, so we're going to just do the redox questions. So I, because you've done redox and maybe we'll do the fertilizer questions as well. Um, Okay, let's just have a look here. Are you all with me? We're on page three. Which of the following is a primary nutrient for plants? Oxygen, carbon, potassium, magnesium. Which of these looks like a primary nutrient for plants? So, what do you guys think? Do you think it's oxygen carbon or do you think, what are your three main things? They are N, P and K, aren't they? And so magnesium is not definitely not N, P or K. So do you guys think that you'll be able to get the answer to this one? It can't be carbon, hydrogen or oxygen because there's two of them. Those are like not really nutrients. Those are the three main things that make up the plant. And then we come to the nutrients that are in the soil. So I would personally say that it must be this potassium. So what I would do is just, um, sorry, let's just grab a pen here. And then I would just put a circle around potassium. That looks like the right answer. Everyone with me? All good? You see, you see here, they've got like questions on alkenes. Now it's been a while since you've done them. Which one of the, I don't really want to do, I just want to stick to mainly a few things, but you know, I find these booklets so excited, exciting that I get almost carried away. Which one of the following statements is correct? Do you remember your alkenes? Those were those double bonded things. Which one of those do you think is correct? Just for the fun of it. Have the general formula CNH2N plus two are unsaturated, readily undergo substitution reactions have one triple bond. Who thinks it's A? Hands up. Who thinks it's B? Hands up. Who thinks it's C? Hands up. Who thinks it's D? Hands up. Okay, well, do you remember alkenes have got a double bond and anything with a double bond is called unsaturated? 
So although I don't want to do this, seeing as I'm here, let's just do that. Okay. Okay, consider the reaction represented by the balanced equation below. Well, let's go to, let's just keep scrolling on and just let's do fertilizers and, um, and, um, and uh, those cells. I just want to see if I can find some. Okay, yeah, it looks like an, a cell. So 1.9, an electrochemical cell is used to electroplate an iron spoon with nickel. Which one of the following half reactions takes place at the positive electrode of the cell? Okay, how are you going to find out? Now, first of all, what is meant by the electrochemical cell? What type of cell is that? Is that with a one beaker or the two beaker? Those who say one beaker, put a band. One beaker. Those who say it's the two beaker with a salt bridge, put up and. Okay, there's one brave man there. Okay, but it's actually, it's this one that's got a beaker and then it's got, whoops. And then you've got a line. Let's see if I can draw a beaker. So you've got your beaker and then you've got your two electrodes in it. So here's your, that is actually the electrochemical cell. So then you got your battery. And then one of those electrodes is attached to the positive and one to the negative. Okay. So if you're going to electroplate an iron spoon with nickel, which one of the following half reactions takes place at the positive electrode of the cell? Now it's actually quite hard I, talking to you, but does, does something disappear at the positive or does it form at the positive? So, so here would be the long stroke of the battery is your positive. So let's join that to there. What is going to happen here? And what is gonna happen here? Which one are we going to put the spoon on? The negative or the positive plate? Okay, so this is what you know. At the positive, which one of the following half reactions take place at the positive electrode of the cell? Now, at the positive, the positive pulls the electrons off and the metal falls apart at the positive. At the negative, it gets deposited. So what are you wanting to do at the positive? You're wanting to pull apart nickel and then at the negative, you're going to put your spoon. So this would be actually my spoon would be here. And then at the negative plate, your spoon is going to be nickel plated. So at the positive plate, this nickel must disappear. And at the negative plate, the nickel must form. So you've got to ask yourself, which of these half reactions is nickel disappearing? Okay, so here you've got to ask, is nickel disappearing? Is nickel disappearing? No. Is nickel disappearing? Is nickel disappearing? Okay, I'm going to leave you to answer and then I'm going to come back to you and get your answer. But is it clear to you it's got to be C or D? Because nothing is happening to the iron spoon except that it's been electroplated with nickel. So at the one electrode, you're going to have the nickel disappearing and it's going to be oxidizing and it's going to be disappearing. And at the other one, it's going to be appearing. So you guys must choose between C and D. And what are you going to look for? You're looking for where is the metal disappearing? And that's going to take place at the positive plate. So it's, is that the half reaction disappearing or is that the half reaction of it disappearing? Any questions? So it's either C or D. Okay, let's have a look at, let's carry on. Um, okay, 114 is a, is a fertilizer question. Do you guys remember eutrophication? Remember eutrophication was where you had 
too many nutrients that you put on the ground and it washed into the river involves the following stages. Does it increase the growth of algae? Does it increase the nitrate concentration? Does it cause the death of fish? Does it decrease the oxygen concentration? Which one of the following correctly represents the order in which these stages occur? Okay, so eutrophication starts obviously with your nutrients. Then they wash into the river. Then your plants bloom. So then your plants bloom. And then the plants die, which decreases the oxygen and then it kills the fish. So you've got to look for that order. That's kind of the story that you got to choose there. So 114, won't you just, you try and figure out the order which that is. So what happens? First of all, you got your nitrates increase because they get washed into the river. Then your algae grows. Then your, your oxygen um, depletes when the algae and the plants die. And then when the oxygen, the last thing that happens is it kills your fish. Okay, so you figure out which is the correct answer there. So let's go further. Okay, here we back to. Now remember, we've got two types of um, cells. So this is 119. This is the one with a one beaker. And that's what we call an electrolytic cell. You got your power source. A learner wants to electroplate a copper ring with nickel. Okay, it's very similar, it sounds, to the previous one. Instead of a, an, an iron spoon, we got a copper ring. He uses the experimental setup as shown below in the following, following diagram. So here's his ring, here's his nickel rod, and he wants the nickel to disappear off here and go onto there. So which one of the following is correct? At the anode, okay, so which of these is going to be the anode and which is going to be the cathode? Now, how do we work it out? Okay, what happens at the anode? Remember the story, Anne? Uh, this is not the best program. Anne, ox. Oxidation occurs at the, um, so that should be an A and that should be an N, and ox. So at which of these electrodes is oxidation occurring? Now, what is oxidation? It's when something goes from nickel, goes to form, nickel plus let's see if i can draw plus here okay so here at this at, at this electrode your nickel is disappearing it's going from nickel solid to nickel ions and then the nickel ions are going to be here okay so this, is this the anode or is this the cathode? Is the nickel disappearing here? That's what you've got to ask yourself. So at the anode, do you have your nickel rod or not? Do you guys kind of get the, the, the idea of what I'm doing, of what I'm trying to say here? So this is what I look at. I see at this electrode, the nickel is forming nickel ions. That is oxidation when it loses its electrodes, electrons. So this must, this one here with a nickel is my anode. And this must, so there's my anode. This one here. So that's going to give you a hint to solving your problem. The nickels dissolving into nickel ions, the nickel ions are being attracted this must be 
um, this must be our negative, um, our positive electrode, sorry. This must be our negative electrode. The negative electrode is attracting the nickel ions to here. And then the nickel ions form a nickel metal here. So there's the reduction half reaction. So you've got to figure out. So this one here with the ring is going to then be our cathode. And then you can, what, what electrolyte would you use? Would you use an electrolyte with nickel or one with copper? And the answer is you're going to use the one with the ions that you're electroplating. So it's got to be one of these last two answers. Okay, you, you work it out. I don't want to give you everything. You must, you must also think and work them out. And then I'll come back to you. Um, okay, here. Back to fertilizers. 122. Which one of the following compounds is, is produced in the Oswald process? Okay. Is the Oswald process involved with making nitrate or is it involved with making sulfate? Who says nitrate and uh, making nitric acid hands up? Oswald process, nitric acid hands up. Yay. Our same brave man. And who says it's making sulfuric acid? Okay, remember that was the contact process, the same person. <laughs> okay, so which of those is involved, which of the following compounds is produced, is produced in the Oswald process? Okay, so remember the Oswald process is the making of nitric acid. So find the answer there which says nitric acid. See how easy peasy that is? Um, okay, let's look for some more um, on cells. Ah, here's our, again, they've got the same sort of cell just with one beaker. The simplified diagram below is a cell that can be used to purify copper. Okay, now I'm going to ask you again, to pull a metal apart, what electrode pulls the metal apart? And that's what we call oxidation of the metal. Is it the positive? Will this side disappear? Or will this side disappear? So there's your negative, right? This is your negative side. This is your positive electrode. At which electrode is the copper going to disappear? Okay, let's try who says the left or positive electrode, the copper is going to disappear? Hands up. Two hands. I think three. Okay, four. Yay! You guys are geniuses. So at this electrode, it's going to disappear. And, at, and then your copper ions are going to mic. So this copper is turning to copper ions. And the copper ions are being attracted to the negative electrode. And then they're going to plate onto here. So this side is going to get thicker and this side is going to disappear. Okay. The simplified diagram below shows a cell that is used to purify copper. The purification failed. Which one of the following is the most likely reason for the failure? A DC source is used. Must you use a DC source? Yes. Okay. So that looks correct. Electrode Y is impure copper. Okay. So, so here we put our, we always put our impure copper here by the one that must disappear. So this must be your impure copper here, but they say electrode Y is the impure copper. So already C looks like the correct answer. So this one's going to disappear and then the slag is going to form a heap at the bottom here. So this is like your junk that gets left behind. You must always put the impure one there and then the pure one will form, the purified copper will form on that side. So it looks like C and that's the, it says electrode X is the anode. No, that is the anode. Oxidation occurs there. And D, electrode Y is a carbon rod. Why would you put a carbon rod? You want to put a, a copper rod. So then your, your answer looks like there, obviously. Okay. 
Okay, here, a galvanic cell consists of the following half cell. So here's your galvanic voltaic cell. Okay, so it's got platinum. You recognize there's your platinum, which we met today. Why are we using platinum? Because your oxidation is a gas, chlorine gas, going to form chlorine ions. And then, oh, sorry, so there's your, sorry, one electrode. It may be actually the opposite way around. And here's your copper solid is going to form copper ions. So then it asks, which one of the follow, following statements is true while, this, while the cell is functioning? Copper is oxidized, chlorine is reduced, chlorine acts as the reducing agent, copper acts as the oxidizing agent. What can I, what am I going to do the first thing I do when I get a problem like this? Any ideas? Shout at me. You're going to go to your BFF, aren't you? And where are you going to go? So you're going to look, so this is chlorine, chlorine, two gas, uh, chlorine, two gas, chlorine, and, chlo and copper and copper solid. Which part of your BFF are you going to go to? You're going to go to your redox table. What are you going to look for? You're going to look for which one is on top and which one is on the bottom. Which half reactions on top? Which half is on? Which one's on the bottom? What do we know? The one on top is the one that is going to give away electrons. I would say copper is going to be oxidized. I, I would guess that chlorine, being a non-metal is going to be reduced, but it's not going to be chlorine that it's not going to be aqueous reduced. It's going to be um, copper chlorine gas is probably going to be reduced. But anyway, can you see how I would Can you see how you're going to work it out? You're going to find the half reaction, which is on top. And then you're going to know that that is the one. Just let's go to the very end of this booklet and let's find the half reaction. You, it's at the end of your booklet too. Okay, so we go to the half reaction table with lithium on the top. So now we go down the table and we're going to find copper two. Okay, so there's copper two. So there's my one half reaction. You mark it on your table. Then you go and you look for chlorine. Chlorine gas, there's your two half reactions. Okay, so now we know that the one on top is going to be reversed. So now we know what is actually happening is copper goes to form so now we reverse the top one, make this a, re a reverse arrow. So that's the reaction, that's the direction that's going to go. And then now we know that copper is going to form copper ions, chlorine is going to form chlorine, chlorine gas is going to form chlorine ions. Now here is something that I haven't really talked with you. If this is oxidized, anything that's oxidized is a reducing agent. So I know my Cu is oxidized, therefore it's the reducing agent. See, so that is your, anything that's oxidized is the reducing agent. And anything that is reduced, in this case, the chlorine gas, is the oxidizing agent. And that's how you're going to work out that problem. Okay, let's go back to that question. I think it was one point. Well, let's just see if I can find it again. Um, what number was it? Okay, here we go. Getting closer. Uh, 
Um, we did this one. So I'm just trying to, I'm sure one of you would be able to shout out which reaction it is. I'm just, I think, and it can't be this one because we we about to get to this one. I can't find it again. But um, you're going to have to solve that one by that method. So the one that's oxidized the reducing agent, the other one that is reduced is the oxidizing agent. Okay, let's get to 1.39. Okay. The following half reactions take place in a galvanic cell. Okay, that's the one with the two beakers and a salt bridge. There's your one half reaction. There's your other half reaction. Which one of the following is the cell notation for the cell? What are you going to do whenever you have a problem like this? 1.39, you're going to go to your where? Your same table we've been to. You're going to see which reaction is on top. Is it that one or is it that one? Now, just have a look at this. This is cobalt 2 plus goes to form cobalt 3 plus, plus an electron. Check it out on this, the half reaction table and see which one is on top. Then that one is probably going to be the one that is, well, the top one will be the one that's oxidized. The other one will be the one that's reduced. And then you put the oxidized reaction on the left and you put the reduced reaction on the right. Okay, so that's how you're going to solve it. Look at, find both of those on your table. And the one that is on top is going to be the one you're going to reverse. And that's going to be the one that must be on the left. I presume it's going to be aluminium. So that's going to probably, it'll probably be aluminium goes from aluminium three plus, And then your cobalt three plus will probably go to your cobalt two plus. Um, cobalt is a metal so you wouldn't i don't think you'd need a platinum electrode so i probably think even without looking at it i'd say my answer must be a and i know that aluminium is fairly high up on the table okay let's go down to here's the galvanic cell again okay what is happening here? Zinc is oxidized to form zinc 2 plus. Copper 2 plus is reduced to form copper. So which one is the anode and which one is the cathode? The left one, is that the, is that, is that the oxidation reaction? So this left one must be the anode. Oh, come on. Anode. And the right one must be your cathode. Because this thing, this is not the best program. This is to see if we can draw, get it to draw a C. Cathode. Okay. So cathode reduction. So let's just see. At the anode is zinc. Let's look at the first one. Copper is formed at the cathode. Is copper forming here? Who says copper is forming here? That's the anode, that's the cathode. Who says copper is forming? Okay, let's come back to it. Who says copper is forming at the anode? That's the anode, the left. Who says zinc is forming? Is zinc forming at the anode? Who says zinc is forming at the cathode? The cathode's the right-hand side. So what is the correct answer? Who says A again? Who says B? Okay, you don't have a clue. Okay, just, just have a look at it again. Which one is the... Oxidation is always pre comes before reduction. So the left-hand side is oxidation. So let's just see what's happening. At and oxidation is your anode. So your anode is the one on the left. On the left, zinc is forming zinc plus. On the right, the cathode, copper is forming at the cathode. And look at that, copper is forming at the cathode. So the answer must be A. Cathode is 
Can you see why though? Who says, who thinks that that's a bit clearer? Who thinks they've got some idea of what's going on? One person, anyone else? Two people, three, four. Does that, does that make sense guys? Because I don't mind explaining who wants me to explain that again. Okay. Two people. Thank you for being honest. Okay. The left side is oxidation. Therefore, the left side is the anode. So do you want to write on, write on this page? For all of these galvanic cells, the left side is oxidation, and the left side is always the anode. So whenever they've got a question in future, the left is oxidation, the left is the anode. The right reduction must always come when you've given off electrons. Here, reduction is the gaining of electrons. So the left gives off electrons, oxidation, anode. The right gains electro, electrons, cathode. So you must kind of in your mind know that the left is always oxidation, the right is always reduction. The left is always the anode, the right is always the cathode. Now we go and we look and we see, they say copper is formed at the cathode. So now we know we've got to go to the right. Now we look at this half reaction. That's copper solution is going to form copper metal. That's what I'm seeing. This is copper aqueous going to form copper solid. Yeah, this the stupid program preview doesn't work. Makes it very hard to write. So, but I'm seeing the ions go to form. Whenever you see a copper like that, it's, it's forming. Copper is formed. So there, I don't even have to go to my options the answer must be A. Okay, let's carry on here. A garden needs a fertilizer with the highest percentage of the relevant nutrients to obtain a green lawn. Okay, green lawn. Are we talking leaves, roots, or fruit? Who says leaves here for, for a garden, uh, for a lawn? Are we interested in the leaf? Okay, you guys are right. You're the geniuses. Okay. And we know that it, the order of fertilizers is N, P, K. Now, who remembers what, who says that N is good for leaves? Hands up. Is, who says N is for leaves? Yes, you're 100% right. P is good for roots and K is good for fruits. Okay, so now we're looking at which of these has got the highest, which one of the following NPK fertilizers will give the best results for a green lawn? And what you've got to look at is your first number. Which has got the biggest first number? And then it look, it's easy. 815, that's a lot of N. 7 is less, 3 is less, 3 is less. So I would say the answer has to be A because it's got the biggest N factor. Okay. A balanced equation for three solutions at equilibrium in a closed container given. No, okay, that's, okay, yeah. 150. In each of the electrolytic cells below, copper sulfate is used as the electrolyte. The electrodes are either carbon or copper. In which cells will the concentration of the electrolyte remain constant during electrolysis? Copper, copper, carbon, copper, copper, co carbon. <laughs> okay. Now, what you want for it to remain constant is the electrode that's falling apart must provide copper. So if the electrode that is falling apart is not uh, providing copper, then your copper is going to get used up. Okay, so here's the question. At which electrode, yes, you can see the positive is the long one. At which electrode does the copper fall apart? The positive or the, at which electrode does 
the metal or whatever it is fall apart? The positive or the negative? Who says the positive? Put up a hand. Yay! Again, you are becoming geniuses. My fledglings are flying. Okay, so we're looking for the positive side that is copper. So that one will definitely do it. It will fall apart and form copper. This carbon will not do it because carbon will fall apart and form carbon if it's going to fall apart at all. And this positive will also do it because it's also going to fall apart and give off copper ions. So it's going to keep the concentration the same. Okay, so then your answers are going to be one and three. Is any of these an option of one and three only? Yeah. There we go. C. Um, okay. In the electrochemical cell below, the letters X and Y represent two metal electrodes. You've seen this before. Which, when the cell is functioning, electron X gains mass. So electron X gets bigger. Uh, come on, don't be a donkey. Yeah? <laughs> Okay, let's just try drawing a line on you. As I say, this preview is not a very good program for drawing. So that one gets bigger, and that one gets smaller. Okay, so what do you know about the one that gets smaller? The one that gets smaller is going to be the one that is oxidized or reduced. Who says oxidized? You say? Oxidized, thank you for shouting out. Makes me feel I'm not just alone on this planet. Okay, so electrode Y is going to be the one that gets smaller. So this is gonna be the oxidized one. Whoops, oxidized. Okay, let's just remember, that's oxidized, that's reduced. So that one is going to give off its electrons, this to here, and then the electrons are gonna form with the ions and going to form a solid there. So which is the following correct cell notation for the cell? Which do we always put first? The, we always put on the left the oxidized first. Is that correct? Yes? yes? So we're going to put the Y must be on the left. Okay, is that oxidation? Y goes to form Y2+. plus. Hands up if you think that's oxidation. Yeah. Is that Mustafa there? Mustafa, is that you? Yes, it's me. Sorry, who? It's me. Who's got the hand up? Me. <laughs> Say your name, me. Oh, Mustafa. Yeah, that's what I asked. Thank you, Mustafa. Okay, so you're right. That's oxidation. Is that reduction? X plus goes to form that. So does that look correct? Y, y is going to form Y2 plus. Yeah, that's the one that gets loses its electrons. And X goes to form X solid, and that's why it's growing. Does A look correct to you? Yes. Yes. Okay, I think, I think so. That's wrong. That's wrong. Anything with an X. And then this is not oxidation where an iron goes to form a solid, that's reduction. So definitely the answer must be A. Do you see how if we keep on doing enough of these, now we're gonna become such geniuses. I can feel myself getting smarter already. Okay, here's one. Which one of the, of the equations below represents the half, the half reaction occurring at the cathode of an electrochemical cell that is used to electroplate an object? Okay, so again, that's the one with a bowl. Ah, you donkey thing. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's the one with the bowl, and you've got the one electrode, you've got the other electrode, the one is attached to the positive, and the other is attached to the negative. And at the positive one, it falls apart, and is, and falling apart is called oxidation. Okay, so which one of the which one of the equations below represents the half reaction occurring at the oxidation occurs at the anode at the positive plate. So this must be the anode. Yeah. The one that's positive. Um, okay. That's supposed to be an A. Um, which one? The, which one of the equations below represents the half reaction occurring at the cathode? So the cathode must be the one that grows. Yeah. So which one of these is, shows a growing of a metal? E. Who says A? A metal is form. Who says a metal is forming? Anyone say A? Okay. You're wise not to say. Who says B? A metal is forming here. Okay, look at this. Chrome three ions plus three electrons go to form chrome solid. Isn't that growing? So that must be the answer, B. Just look at all the others. All the others you end up with ionic things. And ionic things doesn't mean that it's electroplating. It's not the, the plate that is growing. Do you see how we can see that this is the only half reaction where chrome solid metal is forming at the end. So the answer must be B. Does that make sense to you now? Reduction is occurring at the negative electrode of these, um, of these electrochemical cells. So what is happening at the negative electrode, your chrome is beginning to form on it. And there's the reaction. Chrome gains the electrons from the negative electrode and forms a solid chrome metal. And there's your electroplating of chrome. So it's B. Okay. 176. The following equation represents the reaction taking place in an electrochemical cell. Okay, let's have a look at it. Ooh. Okay, this is one of those electrochemical cells, but it's not a... Um, okay, nickel is going to form nickel ions. Lead ions are going to form lead. The flow of electrons through the external circuit of the cell is from Yeah, I don't like this problem at all. This is this an is this an um is this a, a voltaic galvanic or is this a um um what do they call it electro Electrolytic cell. That's the first thing we've got to think about. Is this an electrolytic cell or is this a galvanic cell? Because a, a electrochemical cell can be either. Because this is not a normal cell notation. Okay. I think it I think it actually must be it must be a galvanic voltaic cell. Okay, let's take it as such. Okay. Do you see your nickel is disappearing? So that's your anode. Your lead is appearing, so that's your cathode. Okay, so which of these is your nickel disappearing? Nickel at the cathode, no? Nickel must be the anode. Yeah, so that's the answer there. Okay, but do you see the reason why the answer has to be D? Okay, let's say it again. Nickel is going to form nickel ions. That's oxidation. That's the one that occurs on the left-hand side of the cell notation. And that's your anode. 
So nickel is disappearing. It must be the anode. And your lead is appearing. So that must be your cathode. Do you see why the answer has to be D? Who, who thinks they see that? Just, just hands up if that makes sense to you. Does it make a little bit of sense? Fantastic. Okay. So we look at the equation. We say, which one is disappearing? That's the one on the left of the cell notation. That's the one that's oxidized. Okay, it's nickel is, is oxidizing. So that's your anode. An ox, an anode oxidation. Reduction is occurring to the lead. It's forming a solid. Red cat, red cat. So the lead is the cathode because that's been reduced. I don't see too many on fertilizer. They normally each paper has one on fertilizer and one on a cell. And these are just taken from past year's papers. Whew. You're not going to like 188, I can tell you that. I already don't like it. A simplified diagram for the extraction of aluminium is shown below. So here you've got a positive electrode and a negative electrode. Now, what happens at the positive electrode? Always for the, this is actually just a fancy form of um, electrolytic cell. At the positive electrode, I know the positive is pulling the electrons off the aluminum metal and it's going to cause it to disappear. So I, I'm already seeing this disappear and I'm seeing that form. So this is disappearing. So this positive electrode is my anode where reduction is occur uh, is oxidation is occurring. Okay, let's see from that I can answer this question. The electrolyte is a mixture of cryolite and aluminum oxide. Well, extraction of aluminum. You know what? I'd have to read up on this. This is this is like how they purify aluminum ore. And as far as I know, that's not correct because aluminum ore is normally in the form of bauxite. So I think my, my immediate reaction is that would be wrong. Oxygen gas is produced at the anode. Where's the anode? Oxidation of the anode. Why would oxygen gas be produced there? I don't know. The half reaction at the cathode is aluminum is forming. Okay, A aluminum will be disappearing there and forming here. So I know that three is correct. Huh. So it has to be one of those three is correct. Do you think that it could be one? The electrolyte is a mixture they don't say malt, they don't say what your electrolyte or your solution is. I'm gonna, one's gonna have to go back into the textbook and read how they purify um, molten aluminum. So, but I know it's gonna be one of the answers with three. Anyone got any other suggestions? No. Can anyone think why oxygen gas? Okay, I see little bubbles are being given off here. As your aluminium, why would they have CO2 gas coming out? I oh, know, but they say CO2 gas is coming out. So if this gas was produced and it looks like the gas is coming out, those bubbles must be CO2. So it does, I wouldn't say oxygen is formed. So I would rule out two. Definitely three. I'd say then it has to be one and three. But anyway, that would be just be a guess. Uh, because I'd have to look up what cryolite and aluminium oxide. Well, definitely your, your ore could contain aluminium oxide. I'm not sure what cryolite is. So for now, tentatively, I'm for C. Because I know definitely three is right. And the gas that's given off is not oxygen, it's CO2. So I would rule out, I would definitely say number two doesn't look right. Where's the, there's no mention of oxygen gas here. And therefore, if I'm forced to choose, I'll choose one and three. Which one of the half cells below will result in the highest EMF when it is used as a cathode? 
together with a zinc half cell as the anode. Okay, how are you guys going to go about this? Where are you going to go first of all? Shout it out. To your BFF. Is that what you said? To your table. Okay. To the table. So which you already know that zinc is your anode. So all you've got to do is go and check which of these is lowest on the table. And that is going to be the one that gives the highest EMF. Okay, so go and see if that, 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 or that, whichever one is closest to Megan Fox is going to be the answer. Okay, you all know what I'm talking about there. The one that is lowest down or closest to Megan. Okay, 190. Which one of the following processes are all involved in the preparation of ammonium? sulfate ammonium sulfate okay who remembers the making of sulfate is which process uh, well done so we know definitely it's the contact process is involved the making of yeah the making of Ammonia. Can anyone know? How do we make ammonia? Do we use the fractional distillation of air? Yes or no? Who says yes? To get the nitrogen. Okay. Remember, we freeze air and then, so definitely we use the fractional distillation and we use the contact process. Do we use the harbor process to make ammonia? No. Remember the harbor process is where you take N2 plus H2 and you make ammonia. So definitely we use the harbor process. So now we're looking for one that uses the contact, the harbor and fractional. So there's fractional harbor contact so the answer must be do you see why it's c first we take the air we freeze it and we melt off or we allow the nitrogen to pop off then we make we then we go through the harbor process to make ammonia so there's our ammonia and then we use the contact process to make sulfate so the answer has to be c Um, okay, 198. The cell notation for the galvanic cell is as follows. Nickel disappears to form nickel ions. Lead forms. Lead ions gain those electrons and they form lead. Which one of the following is, is correct for the cell? Is the nickel oxidized? Who says yes. nickel? Okay. Do we have to go any further? No. Okay, but we do. Maybe. Is lead solid reduced? Is that solid being reduced? No, that's, that's, um, that's the ions are being reduced. Nickel is the oxidizing agent. No. The one that is being oxidized. Okay. Look, the agents are that one and that one. Nickel, if it's oxidized, is the reducing agent. No, it says nickel is the, the nickel solid is the, ox, is the reducing agent. PB2 plus is, is being reduced. So PB2 plus is the reducing agent. Uh, so let me just think of that. PB2 plus is the oxidizing agent. Okay, so it's definitely A.
Okay, one, 100. Which one of the following is not part of the eutrophication process? Do we get an algal bloom from the fertilizers? Do, do the algae bloom and become super abundant because of the fertilizers? Yes. yes. Is there a depletion of oxygen in the water? No. Yes, that's what kills the fish. Is there an increase in plant nutrition in the water? Yes, because you've washed all the fertilizers into the river. The only one that looks odd out, bacterial nitrogen fixation. So that must be the wrong answer. Can you see, do you see why the first you, you wash your um, fertilizer into the river, then your algae grow super big. Then they die and cause the water as they decay, they cause the depletion of oxygen in the water. And there's also an increase in plant nutrients in the water. That's the moment that you, all that stuff washes into the river. So this is actually, this step occurs first, that step occurs second, that occurs third, and that doesn't occur at all. Okay. Two halves, this is one, 109. Two half cell reactions are used to construct a galvanic cell. There's the one half reaction, there's the other half reaction. Which one of the state, statements below is correct when the cell is in operation? Mm. Now, none of those as they are written is written as an oxidation reaction. So one of them has got to be reversed. You see, let me tell you what bothers me about this one. I'll tell you what bothers me greatly about this one. Do you see that both of them are 0 0.15 volts? That's what bothers me. If I knew which one had the bigger voltage, I would make that one positive. But because they both got the same voltage, I say this is a stupid question, a super dumb question. But... And, and I would say that I would struggle to do it. I, I would not know how they expect you to do it unless we took it as its face value. No. Let's just see if, if one of them is wanting. This one is, if they positive, it means it wants to do it. So X wants to go, this one wants to be oxidized. This one is a negative one. That doesn't want to be reduced. I would honestly say that, forget this one, you cannot do it if they both got the same voltage. And that is why when you look on that table, none of them have the same voltage. I, I think that the examiner made a mistake, but I could be wrong. So anyway, I'm just saying this, this is super dumb. That question. Okay, let's have a look at that one, the next one. One, 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 oh. which one of the following is correct for the industrial preparation of sulfuric acid? Okay, what process makes sulfuric acid? It is the contact process. What is the catalyst for the contact process? It's either that, so it's got to be, is it iron or vanadium pentoxide? 
Is it this one? So I'm going to take your word for it. I know that I know that one of those that we studied uses vanadium pentoxide. So then if it would be, it would be D. But I would just check that because I can't remember. But it's, we did it. But it's, that's where it, it just helps to rem, have a good memory. I never, I only, only remember what's necessary. And there's very little in life you actually have to remember. Okay, here's one on one, 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 nine. Which one of the following shows the electrode where the electrons are gained in an electrolytic cell? Okay, which one of the following shows the electrode where the electrons are gained? Sir? Yeah? Back a minute because it's great for them now. Okay, so, so, sorry, what are you saying then? That they must, fin I must finish off? Yeah, because it's great for them now. Okay. Guys, I hope this was of some use to you because, uh, and then you can, you can w work through some of these yourself or we'll carry on with that. But I hope that was of some use for you. And um, hey, there's seven of you. Well done, you warriors for coming in this terrible weather. Have a good break. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for setting it up and thank you for your participation, et cetera, et cetera. Great. Cool. Have a good weekend, sir. Okay, you too. Cheers all. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys.